Hi everyone, welcome to the part 2 of this video. So in the last video we talked about what loss function should be there to train a perceptron and how perceptron acts as a binary classifier, right? So in this video our goal is to derive a weight update rule that will help us to find the optimal set of parameters W for the perceptron and we are going to use gradient descent update to update the parameters, right? So let us uh, see, right? Okay, so this was the loss function that we uh, talked about in the last video and we want to learn this set of parameters W, right? So what we need to do here is we, we need to uh, find out what should be the W, right? And we also said that this loss function JW is a convex function and we start from any random W and we want to end up at the optimal w which is w star right so this is some w random right and this we can do using a gradient update rule which repeatedly decreases our loss in the direction of uh, reducing gradient right at this point the gradient is negative right? at this point the gradient is lesser at this point it is lesser and at this point the gradient is zero so gradient basically means the slope of this curve right so this this can be written as delta of j w with respect to delta of w right and now you can see this w is not one parameter basically it is a vector of a lot of parameters right so you have w naught w1 up to up to up to wn where there are n features in a given example right so i'm going to derive update for a given uh, wi for any particular wi right and you can you generalize it for all, everything right so this is already generalized so for any particular wi we are going to see how that weight parameter is going to get updated right so uh, let us uh, we need to compute delta of jw with respect to delta of w so this is uh, going to be uh, delta of j with respect to delta of y hat and y hat is a function of z right so y hat is a function of uh, sigma of z i right and z is nothing but z, z is w transpose into x right so we are going to keep these things in mind so i'm going to use the chain rule right so j is a function of w or j is a function of y hat and y hat is a function of z and z is a function of w right so derivative of y hat with respect to z and derivative of z with respect to w right so this is how i'm going to write uh, delta jw with respect to w because these terms are anyway uh, going to get cancelled but we uh, so what we will get is delta j by delta w but we are not going to cancel these terms because this is how the chain rule works right so y is a constant but y hat is a variable y hat is a variable in this equation right so let us first uh, compute this term right so delta j of uh, y hat right so this this is uh, going to be nothing but if you differentiate this with respect to y hat what you are going to get you are going to get is y i upon 1 minus y hat of i okay and let us let us uh, do do it for only uh, for only one i right so i am uh, removing this notation of i later on we, we can add this notation right so let us do for one example right for one example so that i can simplify things right so y upon 1 minus y hat of i plus 1 minus y upon 1 minus y hat of i right so this is what uh, the derivative is the next part is to take this derivative right so let us define this derivative right so delta of y hat with respect to delta of z so i'm going to do it separately so y hat is uh, going to be sigma of z so y hat is going to be sigma of z 
so delta of y hat with respect to delta of z this is again going to be 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to the power minus z so it is uh, going to be 1 divided by 1 raised to the power minus z square into derivative of e raised to the power minus z which is e raised to the power minus z right now i can write this equation as 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to the power minus z into 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to the power minus z right because you can try to expand this right so if you if you uh, do this it would be 1 plus e raised to the power minus z minus 1 upon 1 plus e raised to the power minus z this goes off and what you are left with 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to the power minus z square right so these two are same right so these two are same right that you can check right we have already shown you so this term is going to be nothing but this is going to be sigma of z and this term is again going to be nothing but 1 minus sigma of z right so you can write derivative of y hat dash right so y hat dash would be sigma of z into 1 minus sigma of z right so y hat was sigma of z and derivative of sigma dash z is going to be equal to sigma of z into 1 minus sigma of z so this is a very important result because this would be very useful when you are also working with multi-layer perceptron right so derivative of a sigmoid function is going to be nothing but sigmoid of z into 1 minus sigmoid of z right so you should remember this result so let us use this uh, formula and you can also see that sigma of z is same as y hat so i can write this as y hat into 1 minus y hat right so here i will uh, substitute this derivative which is going to be y hat into 1 minus y hat right and the next derivative which i need to find out is this derivative delta z with respect to w right so z is this w is this and now we want to find out there are a lot of w's right so i'm going to find out with respect to one particular wi so this is going to be wi right so if you expand this equation this is going to be a w naught plus w1 x1 plus wi xi plus up to up to wn xn right so if you see what is the derivative of z with respect to wi this is going to be nothing but x of i so I put a x of i here, right? So this is your delta j with respect to delta of w i. Now let us simplify this. So uh, I this becomes y minus y hat into y plus one minus. Sorry, uh, this uh, this derivative should be y hat, right? So apologies this when you uh, take a derivative of y hat this this should be your uh, uh, y upon y hat right so this this becomes your y hat minus y into um, yeah you you also have a minus sign here right so you have a minus sign outside yeah you, you 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 have a minus sign here right and this this is common for both and when you take this derivative this minus is here and when you take a derivative of this this minus minus make a plus here right so this will become your uh, plus y hat and this would be your minus term this would be your plus and this would be your plus and this would be your minus minus y into y hat divided by y hat into 1 minus y hat right into y hat into 1 minus y hat into x of j right so if you see these two terms go off and these two terms also go off so you are left with y hat minus y into x of j this is your final what is left right so y hat is your nothing but prediction so sigma of w transpose x 
your output of the your output probability minus your actual label into x of j and this is your delta j with respect to delta of uh, sorry w i right so this is w of i right for the ith feature for any given one example right so this is what you are going to get right delta j with respect to delta of w i where x of i represents the ith feature of a given example right and when you are going to use gradient descent you are going to sum up this gradient over all examples right so you can write the formula as your w of i will be updated as w minus learning rate into summation over all examples i goes from 1 to m right this is going to be y of i sorry y hat of i minus y of i into x of i for, for j right so this is going to be w of j right so this is how you you are going to update the jth gradient right so this is your final update rule for the perceptron right so this will make sure that you are always reducing your loss and it will help you to find out the optimal uh, value of wj right so i hope this this calculus part is uh, quite clear to you now and i will see you guys in the next video